Can a person ever be too big to fail? Because, you know, you hear about corporations now, and it's happened already, you know, that they had to be propped up. They were too big to fail. If they failed, they would collapse the American economy. Well, are people getting to that position? And Warren Buffett would be a prime example. A billionaire worth some $60 billion, and he's got his hands in so many different things. And yet he's portrayed like this angelic uh, figure, you know, he's come to Obama's aid, stands beside him saying that the rich should be paying more money for their taxes and he wants to do that. I loved one of the other persons at one time said, well, if he wants to pay more taxes, then why doesn't he just cut a check and send it to the government? Which he never did. But here's the thing. You don't get to have 60 billion bucks by playing nice in the sandbox. And we all know people like that. People that will do anything anywhere to get ahead and I'm not saying that that's bad in itself but it can be bad when you start trampling over ordinary people for your own personal gains and uh, recently on the Kaiser report I'm talking about less than a week ago they did a report about uh, Warren Buffett and that's where I looked up this stuff stuff on the Seattle Times and the Center for Public Integrity welcome to the Kaiser report I'm Max Kaiser Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto Warren Buffett everything else. Stacy. Max, we're going to be speaking about, oh, debt pushers, oligarchs, and middlemen in this episode. And the first headline reads, Warren Buffett's mobile home empire preys on the poor. Billionaire profits at every step from building to selling to high-cost lending. This is Clayton Homes, and it's the nation's biggest home builder. They build 50% of new homes in America, and they're all mobile homes. You know, there's things that you have delivered on the back of a truck, a lorry, and uh, put onto some piece of property that you don't actually own somewhere. Well, Buffett's mobile home empire promises low-income Americans the dream of home ownership, but Clayton relies on predatory sales practices, exorbitant fees, and interest rates that can exceed 15% trapping many buyers and loans they can't afford in homes that are almost impossible to sell or refinance. An investigation by the Center for Public Integrity and the Seattle Times has found. Yeah, well, you know, Warren Buffett's become the company store yeah. of America. You know, he's the guy people end up dealing with, whether they're eating junk food from junk food sellers, processed food. Of course, he owns huge amounts of processed foods. He owns railways to move all the processed food and coal and energy and oil and all that stuff from coast to coast. He's now into the, essentially the slumlord business. Clayton Homes are the, the, the biggest home builder in America. They build those uh, mobile homes. Uh, his company, Berkshire Hathaway, bought the company in 2003. Um, he's expanded it from a 1.3 billion, which he bought it at, to now a multi-billion dollar company. That he, the, the basically uh, Clayton Homes uses other Berkshire Hathaway subsidiaries, like painting and uh, decorating, and the, they, Clayton Homes itself borrows money from Berkshire Hathaway in order to lend to these people at 15%. Of course, Berkshire Hathaway is one of the highest rated uh, bonds in the world. Uh, they could issue debt at the lowest cost. In fact, they could get it for basically negative interest rates at the government. Um, and they talk about that under federal guidelines, most Clayton loans are considered higher priced. Those loans average seven percentage points higher than the typical home loan in 2013, according to the Center for Public Integrity Times analysis of federal data, compared with just 3.8 percentage points above for other lenders. Right, if Warren Buffett were a politician in South Africa 20, 30 years ago, he would support apartheid because this is interest rate apartheid. If you are not one of Warren's friends or shareholders, and the shares are over $200,000 a piece, then you're going to pay through the nose an exorbitant rate for access to capital. If you're on the right side of the interest rate apartheid wall, and you're a friend of Charlie and, and Warren, then your cost of capital is near zero. And let's face it, this Berkshire Hathaway is not about competition. It's an anti-competitive conglomerate that if there was any regulator in America, they would not let this conglomeration of thieving and slumlording take place. But of course, the regulators are in the pockets of people in the crony capitalist class like Warren Buffett. Well, they control 39% of the mobile home loan market. The next biggest competitor is Wells Fargo, which I think he's also a huge owner of. He's a big owner. Remember that in 2008 when the financial system crashed, one of the biggest subsidiary 
recipients was Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway. Had he been forced to compete on a level playing field with other business people in America, we would be talking about him in the past and Berkshire Hathaway in the past as a company that unfortunately was not smart enough to survive the huge billions, multi-billion dollar handout and subsidies from the federal government. He's al alive that the parasite of of Berkshire Hathaway has been allowed to continue and to grow and to suck the lifeblood out of the American economy. So Clayton owns 39% of the new mobile home uh, loan market. Wells Fargo is the second biggest at 6%, just 6%. So they also maintain this cozy, like this like down home shops. We're just like regular folk sort of thing. They use the guy from um, the Duck Dynasty. Duck Dynasty. Quack, quack, quack. Yeah. I am the quacker from Warren Buffett. Quack. Yeah, their slumlord, uh, you know, monetization of the slums as well. But it works because, like, there's a quote from here from a person who lives in Bug Tussle, Alabama. Bug uh, Tussle? Bug Tussle. <laughs> These bugs are tussling down in Alabama, and Carol Carroll has been paying down her home for more than a decade, but still owes nearly 90% of the sales price and more than twice what the home is worth because, of course, the, the value of, a, of, of these mobile homes are just like cars. You drive it off the lot and it, it drops by 50 In the meantime, these people have 20, 22, 26 year loans, up to 30 year loans on these properties that they, the break even point doesn't even come until what, 21 years into these loans because of the high interest rates and the declining value of it. Like anyone who's seen that movie, It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart at the SNL, who everyone loves, he goes against Mr. Potter who's the corrupt banker in the evil center of town who turns the town into a houses and whiskey joints. You know, this sounds like bug tussle it is being turned in via Berkshire Hathaway, a, a slum of, of ill repute and drug use, thanks to Mr. Potter slash Warren Buffett. Well, Warren Buffett himself and Berkshire Hathaway actually issued a letter after this article to, to deny any, any of this, and they say they give people the, 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 the ability to own their own property sort of thing. So they're, they're denying it. At a good rate, because we love you at Berkshire Hathaway. So another interesting thing along this sort of line of, of why Americans are sinking deeper and deeper into poverty is uh, the real reason yeah, why is that? If things are so great, yeah. and Warren Buffett can buy all these great businesses, and the money's easy, and America's fabulous, why is the poverty rate skyrocketing? Well, exactly. Well, because there's a lot of middlemen, and there are many administrators in this so-called capitalist system, and we turn to the headline, the real reason college tuition costs so much. A major factor driving an increase in costs is the constant expansion of university administration. According to the Department of Education data, administrative positions at colleges and universities grew by 60% between 1993 and 2009, which Bloomberg reported was 10 times the rate of growth of tenured faculty positions. So you have, in, in, the, in California, there was a 221% increase in the number of administrators, and they're on huge salaries compared to the tenured faculty salaries, which were declining. I'll give you another country that died because there were too many bureaucrats, civil servants, and administrators. The Soviet Union. Yeah, exactly. So America is becoming Sovietization by giving money to bureaucrats. There's too many bureaucrats, but there's also a toll booth. Like Warren Buffett is a toll booth operator. Every single way, every single aspect of the mobile home market of people already so impoverished working um, at McDonald's and uh, chefs and short order chefs. That's and for slave wages. Yeah, but the, he's taking a cut at every single... Right. He's angle. the company store. Remember he's on the, the plantation store. in yeah. the antebellum south of America, there were the slaves and they had to shop at the company store, which was owned by the slave owner. So here's Warren Buffett, slave owner of the 21st century. He owns Berkshire Hathaway, the company store. He puts people up in these slums, and if they got to buy a toothpaste, toothbrush, a biscuit, you know, a condom, a big shaver, Heinz a shaver, ketchup, a ketchup and right? Kraft uh, macaroni and cheese Yeah, Warren Buffett should have a cookbook, how to make some lovely tomato soup for your family. Take a little Heinz ketchup packet from one of the restaurants he owns and put it into some hot boiling water and maybe, you know, shoot a frog or uh, whatever they have in bug tussle. Get some <laughs> bugs 
you know, put it in your ketchup soup. And it's a Warren stew. Warren Buffett stew. Warren loves us. Actually, on that Warren Buffett story, a lot of people are in default on their mortgage loans on these mobile homes. Well, they're going to Warren Buffett's own prisons. Exactly. And, but they, they're, the, apparently the, the debt collectors are telling them, encouraging them not to buy medicine, not, not to buy food that week and things like that. But finally, I want to talk about another story along this sort of debt uh, market and, and toll booths everywhere is it emerged this past week that the IMF has made a 2.5 billion euro profit on Greek debt, Greek misery and Greek austerity and the Greek disaster. Well, here we have odious debt has finally arrived, Greece to write off illegal debt. So Zoe Konstantopoulou, and I hope I pronounced his name right, the head of the Greek That's parliament, and, Zoe Konstantopoulou. and he released two videos which probably went viral, and I'll show you a little clip here because that clip, that, that text there says, check it, erase it. And that is referring to 320 billion euro debt. The people of Greece want to check it, that it's not odious, and of course they're going to find it's odious, and then write it off. You know, you can't assume that they will automatically find it to be odious. Obviously, all the debt that was in, illegally incurred through the malfeasance and market uh, securities law violations of Goldman Sachs, and John Paulson and Papandreou, the former prime minister, who colluded to defraud the Greek people as they were fraudulently induced to join the euro. Well, there's a debt truth committee. They formed a debt truth committee. Again, like they're going to look, look at it. They're, yeah, exactly, like apartheid. They're going to examine it and find out which is illegal, which was given odiously, like with a predatory loan, as we're talking at the beginning of the show, is if you're giving a loan to somebody that you know cannot pay this back, that's considered odious debt, it's considered a predatory loan, it's considered illegal. You can't coerce somebody into taking something that they can't afford to pay. So they're, they want to look at whether or not this debt bailout, the IMF, the Troika, all of that loans that they gave during the crisis, whether they knew that, in fact, Greece could never pay that back. Obviously, they did know because it's 180% it's, it's of their GDP. Any debt that tastes worse than moussaka <laughs> is odious and should be made illegal and written off. That's the Max Kaiser debt jubilee methodology. Odious debt? Moussaka. <laughs> Which tastes better? Moussaka? Then this is clearly garbage debt. It's illegal. It's odious. Get rid of it. Follow my advice, Greece. The problem with your test is that everything tastes better with ouzo. Thanks, Stacy. All right, well, stay tuned for the second half. A whole lot more.